You're going 70 miles per hour. <laughs> How long would it take you to drive 70 miles? 70 n***a? Oh, why? Why 70? Explain to the camera why 70. Because one time 70, 70. You're going 70 <laughs> miles per hour. <laughs> What is going on Rocket Powered Sound Designers? Welcome to the best channel on YouTube for Serum Tutorials. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to make the pluck from Lil Pump's track, Bouse. And this is what it sounds like. Lil Pump. Ooh. Yeah, I came in with a sauce. Ooh. Yeah, I came in with a sauce. Ooh. Pretty dope track here, um, and this pluck is like literally the same as the OG track. If you guys want to know how to make that high-pitched squealy sound, just let me know, um, and I will make another tutorial on that. But without further ado, let's jump into the sound here. Now, if you guys are new here and you're not already subscribed, you know, this is the only channel that's putting out a serum tutorial every day. So. If you're not already subscribed and you're interested in daily serum tutorials, which I think you should be, then make sure you guys go ahead and click that subscribe button. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off um, with oscillator A here. Oscillator A is going to be used as the um, the base or like the foundation. I don't mean base as in like base or treble. I mean base is like the foundation for our particular synth here or the patch. Now we're going to be using this um, this sawtooth waveform and we're going to be putting the unison to two. And we want a little bit of detune in here. And we could just leave it like that, all right? Now, guys, keep in mind, this is a pluck. So what makes a pluck a pluck? You know, obviously we're plucking something. So um, to do that, we want to emulate the, um, the volume envelope of if we were to actually pluck, like let's say a guitar string. So let's see, the sustain would be way down. A little bit, a bit of release on it. A little bit more decay. That sounds pretty good. All right, so now that we have like the foundation of the sound, what's gonna come into play and actually make this thing come to life? You may be asking. Well, could you ask? Because now we're gonna be putting on oscillator A, which is really gonna make the sound come to life. So we're gonna be putting on a sync here. And what the sync's gonna do It's gonna allow us to find that perfect pitch, which is just about four octaves up. Now, if I were to turn this up, four octaves up, it's doesn't sound the same as if we have the pitch to 3.98%. That's because it's not a perfect four octaves. You know, as we can see, it's about 3.98 per, or uh, no, I'm sorry. It's three octaves and then 0.9 or 98% per, of an additional octave. So we're just about there, but that creates that nice harmonic tone that we're looking for. And we want to turn on the level a tad bit. And of course, we can't go wrong by adding in a little bit of noise here, thicken it up. Okay, now we gotta shape the sound a little bit. In the OG track, we kinda hear a little bit um, resemblance of a filter. So we can go ahead and just turn it on for oscillator A and oscillator B. We're gonna leave it on a low pass. And we're just gonna take our envelope one that is the master shape. And we're just gonna leave it like that, all right? As you guys can hear, we're like really getting close to the sound. Um, and what we're gonna do now is just go into our compressor, uh, move the compressor to the top, turn on multiband, and you're gonna realize this sounds really harsh, especially when we have a little bit of re release here. It's just ending really abruptly, which isn't what we want. So to, what we're gonna do to fix that is we're just gonna bump up the release on the compressor. That way it has some time to come to a closing end ramp. So 
So yeah, the location of the release is completely up to you guys. I'm gonna leave it around 160 milliseconds. And then finally, we can finish off the sound with a little bit of hyper dimension. Um, by the way guys, multiband compressors are typically pretty good to throw on most of your sounds if you use them properly. Um, but of course, there are a couple instances where you don't wanna use them. You know, it's just a great way to kind of bring out all the frequencies and make sure everything has is being heard and kind of squash it down a little bit without actually having to EQ it. Um, of course, you should EQ everything, in my opinion. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and turn on the hyper. My little trick for editing it, I turn up the mix to 100%, and then I just kind of choose my settings and see what sounds best. I think that sounds pretty damn good. Turn on the dimension, turn up the mix. So we have a low size, high mix, and that'll give us just enough space to really expand the sound without getting an, any extra feedback. So this is what the completed sound sounds like. Now, of course, you guys can throw on a little bit of reverb, or not reverb, uh, vibrato. Um, and that will just come down to there. Uh, so we're gonna route this in the matrix. We're gonna go LFO one and we can go to global master tune and this is just going to be affecting the overall tuning of the sound We're gonna have it going back and forth. So we have we're going positive and then negative which is perfect We're gonna be be able to stay on the note that we'd like Okay, we're gonna turn off um, any triggering or envelope and we're gonna turn off BPM sync so we can control the speed of this a little bit better So, like I said guys, if you like this tutorial, drop a like. If you're new here, click that subscribe button. And if you want me to make a tutorial on that screechy sound, which sounds like... Just let me know. Drop me a comment. And I will do so. Just, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? Drop a comment and see what happens. <laughs> Anyways guys, my name is Shane from Rock the Parrot Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next year tutorial. Thank you.